and wildlife in Maine. And today I am at the Maine Wildlife Park in Gray, and we are going to be talking about the North American beaver. Um, you can see behind us today, uh, we are at the beaver enclosure here at the Maine Wildlife Park. Um, at the park, we have lots of different species, over 30 species of native Maine wildlife. Um, and they're all here for a number of different reasons. Um, most of them are either orphaned, they had some kind of injury, um, or in some cases they were even illegal pets. Um, and the park serves as a home for animals that are non-releasable. If you wanna learn more about the park, go to mainewildlifepark.com. And you can also go to mefishwildlife.com to learn more about Maine wildlife and inland fisheries and wildlife. So today, again, we're gonna talk about American beavers. We're gonna talk about their unique adaptations, um, how they affect and change their habitat and the environment, and also maybe a little bit about their history here in Maine. So let's get into it. Um, this beaver at the wildlife park, she is a female beaver. Um, she is here because she was orphaned when she was young and she was also um, ill, she had pneumonia. Um, now she's healthy and happy and here at the wildlife park. She is five years old. Um, she has been here since she was, I think just about one or two years old. So she's been here for a few years and this is her um, enclosure that has a combination of land and water in it. Um, we have flowing water for her to encourage those natural um, beaver instincts and for her to use those adaptations that we're gonna talk about today. So beavers are one of the few animals that can drastically change their environments. And they have different physical and behavioral adaptations in order to do that. Um, there are so many special adaptations that beaver have, and I hope we can talk about all of them today, but there are so many, um, so we're going to get to it. The first thing we're going to look at a little bit more closely here, I have a beaver mount, and this is not a living beaver. This beaver is taxidermed, but you can see some of the features on this beaver that we're going to look at. So beavers have been around for millions of years. Um, beaver ancestors were much larger than the beavers we have today. They were actually the size of black bears. So this is a large or average size beaver. Um, they can still be pretty big. Most beavers can be between 55 and 60 pounds. So they are good sized mammals, um, a lot bigger than I think people think they are because we often see them swimming around with just the tops of their bodies out of the water, or we see them from a distance. So up close, a beaver is actually really big. And they have a lot of special physical adaptations, like very strong teeth, special fur, and special feet um, to help them survive in their wetland habitats. Um, they also have behavioral adaptations that help them survive. They um, can communicate with other beavers for protection. Um, they have very strong parenting skills and, of course, their behaviors for constructing and building lodges and dams. So we're going to take a closer look at Maine's largest species of rodent. So mom beavers, the female beavers, will have one to four kits per um, litter. And those young beavers stay with their parents for the first two years of their life. Move to the side so we can see her a little better. So they stay with their parents for the first two years of their life and they learn all the special behaviors and how to use those physical adaptations from their parents so that when they go off on their own, they have everything they need to successfully build their own lodges and dams and start their own families. We're gonna take a look here at the beaver skull and in particular, these teeth. So beavers have these very, very strong special teeth. And like other rodents, they grow through the entirety of their lives. They just continually grow. So they have to always be chewing on stuff in order to keep those teeth um, filed down. You can see our beaver is demonstrating this beautifully right now. She has a piece of browse 
and she's going to bring that into the water to eat it. But they use their front hands and their teeth to um, grab pieces of trees. That's what we call browse. It's pieces of trees that they eat and they use to build with. So they're going to eat the bark and the twigs and the leaves, but they don't eat. They can't actually ingest that um, dense wood that's in the middle. So they use that wood then that they've stripped all the barks and twigs and leaves off of for building. Here you can see too, they have their back teeth, their molars back here are much flatter. So they are herbivores. They will only eat plants. They don't eat other animals. So these black back molars here help them grind up plants, leaves and bark to eat it. And then their front teeth are more like chisels. And that's what they use to take down trees and take off branches. And you can see this special color. So unlike our teeth that are white, they have this orange yellow in their teeth. And beavers actually have a metal in their teeth. So their teeth isn't completely made of metal. It's not like they have steel teeth but they actually have bits of iron in their teeth. And that's what makes them that strong so they can chew through wood. If we tried to chew through wood, we would break our teeth, it would hurt, it would be terrible. But they have iron in their teeth that makes them extra strong for chewing through wood. So we're also gonna take a look at some beaver fur. So this is a beaver pelt. And like their teeth, their fur is a physical adaptation that helps them survive in their wetland habitat. So beavers are active all year round. They'll be a little bit less active when it's um, like the middle of winter, there's a lot of ice and snow, but they have special fur for keeping them warm and dry. So inside they have a layer that's very fluffy, kind of like a down jacket or a down blanket. That fluffy layer is gonna help keep them really warm. And then on the outside, it's this longer hair is a little bit um, rougher. And that is what they actually use to help protect them from the cold water and the elements. So they have special um, glands at the base of their tails. So down by their tails and they take the oil from that, those glands and they cover their fur in that oil. And it actually sort of conditions their hair and blocks out water. So that cold and icy water doesn't touch their skin and make them cold. It falls right off of their fur. I also have an example of a beaver foot here. This is another physical adaptation that beavers have that helps them live in the water and on land. So you can see between their toes, they have some webbing and that helps them paddle and swim around but they also have the footbed here to help them walk on land. I also am gonna put on my shades here. What do these have to do with beavers? So beavers actually have special eyelids that act like glasses or goggles. And those eyelids make it so that they can swim and see underneath the water. So it's a clear eyelid that goes over their eyes that protects them and helps so they can actually see underwater. And they also have very special ears. So their ears can also close up so that water doesn't get in their ears when they're under the water too. And they can stay underwater for a really long time. This here, is what we call scat. And scat is just the science name for poop. This is a fake beaver poop. It's not a real beaver poop, but it is shaped like a real beaver poop. And like I said, they eat plants. So their poop is gonna be um, all made up of those leftover bits of plants. And our beaver here at the park makes a lot of this. So we are always cleaning up after her. Their um, scat also helps with their communication. So they'll use that scat and the scent that goes with their scat to mark their territory and let other beavers and other animals know that that's their space. 
So we've talked about all the different tools and the beaver's tool belt for building and for surviving in wetland habitats. But let's also talk about how um, their behaviors can use those tools um, to survive. So the first thing I want to talk about are beaver lodges. So a beaver lodge is the beaver's home. That's their shelter. And some beavers will leave their families and they will start a brand new lodge in a brand new area. But they'll also start their lodge um, from an abandoned or an old lodge that has regrown over time. Um, so they don't always have to start completely from scratch. And they learn all these behaviors when they're really young. So it's important those first two years that they spend with their parents um, to learn what trees they should take down, what trees they can eat, how to build and how to make lodges that are safe and warm and keep them protected. And those lodges are more than just a pile of wood and sticks. They also use rocks and mud, all kinds of different things to build their lodges. She is coming back over to say hello. She definitely knows when we are here, we are always bringing food or we're bringing enrichment um, treats. So she gets really excited <laughs> when we come over here and she wants to know what we're up to. Try not to block her so you can keep seeing her. The other thing that beavers construct are beaver dams. So they do not live in beaver dams. Sorry, okay. So they do not live in beaver dams. These are how they control the flow of water. So beavers live in wetland habitats. So they wanna have as much wetland habitat as possible to live in. So they use their amazing um, ability to hear and they listen for flowing water. And when they hear flowing water, that's where they build up a dam so that they can um, create more wetland habitat. They don't have very good sense of um, being able to see. Their eyesight isn't great. So they rely really heavily on their sense of being able to hear and um, also their sense of smell for communicating. You can see here on this um, beaver mount, there is a piece of a beaver chew. And this shows you those teeth marks and everything, how they take down trees and get through the wood that way they can then use it to build those um, lodges and dams. And the dams are built very similar to their lodges. So it's not just wood. They'll also use rocks and mud and other things that um, they find in that habitat that helps make it strong. Um, so not just sticks, because if it was just sticks, water could still go through and the, the dam wouldn't be as solid. And an important thing to remember too is those wetland habitats are not just homes for beavers. Beavers create wetland habitat that helps a lot of other animals live there too. One of those other animals um, that lives there is a muskrat. Have you ever seen a mus muskrat in Maine? You probably have, and you might've just thought that they were small beavers, but this is a muskrat. And you can see why people confuse a muskrat for a beaver. They look very similar, but muskrats are smaller and their tails are different too. They don't have that wide flat um, paddle tail like a beaver does. They have a much thinner tail um, like other rodents. And they have much smaller feet too. So I have a mold of a muskrat foot that we'll look at next to the beavers. So this small one is a muskrat. It's much smaller and they have a lot less webbing between their toes. And then this is the beaver one. So very different in size and their shape. And here I have a muskrat scat too. So this little one, that's the muskrat. And this big one is the beaver. So again, there's a really big size difference there. Muskrats also have a little bit of a different diet. So they are not just herbivores. Um, they do eat a lot of plants, but they'll also eat some freshwater uh, mussels and, 
and uh, other little invertebrates and things that they'll find in the water too. So they don't only eat plants, they eat some other animals also. But just like the beaver, they have um, their fur coat that is really well adapted for living in wet and cold environments, helps keep them waterproof. They have very similar teeth too. They don't um, chew through wood and build dams and lodges. Um, they actually build their houses usually out of grasses like cattails. Um, so they live a lot differently than a beaver, um, but they look very similar. They look like a little mini, mini beaver. Beavers are what we call a keystone species. And this means that they're an important species and can greatly affect other wildlife and the environment. Um, so they're sort of a core, core species to an environment. Without them, that environment and the other animals, um, their lives would be very different. Again, they're one of the very few animals that can change their habitat. And other animals and people rely on that water um, for, for different food and for shelter and other resources. So without beavers, the landscape would look drastically different. And they move best in the water, they survive best in the water, so they want to have as much of it as possible. Beavers can even make an oasis in a desert. There have been examples of beavers living in more desert habitats um, with just a tiny bit of water, and they will turn that into a little oasis in the desert um, so they can even live there. What type of animals do you think can benefit from that wetland habitat that beavers create? What other animals might like that mix of wetland and forest? So there's a lot of animals that benefit from that. A lot of birds of prey, um, also different waterfowl like ducks and geese and um, herons. Also reptiles and amphibians like turtles and frogs and snakes and many, many more. Um, insects like dragonflies and damselflies. Those are really important habitats for um, numerous different animals. So we have gone over all of my um, fun beaver facts and I would love to know if you have any questions for me now about um, beavers. Okay, we have one good question for you. David is wondering if most of the sticks used in beaver dams are chewed or do they also gather random wooden and plant material without any traces of them actually chewing on them? Yeah, so those um, lodges and dams can definitely have wood in them that they haven't had to um, chew or take down themselves. So when we look at the way animals live, for a lot of them, they want to do something that's a little bit easier or uses less energy and resources. So just like a beaver might take over an abandoned lodge or dam um, to save energy and resources, they're also going to save energy by picking up sticks and things like that that they don't need to actually chew and take down because that probably uses a lot of energy um, to chew and take down, especially some of the larger trees that they are very capable of taking down. Um, but they also do like the fresh green leaves, um, the spring growth that comes on the twigs, um, like this tree here, all these really nice green leaves that are on here, they want to get that too. So they will have to take down um, parts of trees um, themselves to get those uh, good nutrients that they need from the leafy greens. Awesome. So India, who's five years old and joining us today, she wants to know a little bit more about how beavers use their amazing tails. Yeah, that's great. So the beaver tail, um, let me see if I can show it to you on this beaver mount a little bit better. Okay, it's a little bit heavy. <laughs> but this beaver mount here has its tail um, attached to it. And you can see it's a really wide, flat tail. Um, and it does help them swim through the water. So they use it like a, like a boat rudder or a paddle um, to steer and float through the water. 
but they also use it for communication. So I mentioned earlier how beavers communicate with each other to protect each other. So not only do they use that tail for swimming, um, but they also use it to slap the water. So when they are startled or they think there's something dangerous around, they'll use that big flat tail and they will hit the water with it. And they'll hit the water with their tail and that alerts all the other beavers around them that there's something dangerous. Great. Okay, so a few more questions coming in. Um, let's see, there's a lot. Let me pick a couple here. Um, oh, this is a good one. Someone's wondering if, if it's true that beavers are actually irritated by the sound of running water. And that is a question we hear a lot. Yeah, so sound is very important to beavers. Um, they use that sound of flowing water to know where to build. Um, so they rely a lot on those, those sounds. Um, I don't know if irritated is the right word. Um, it definitely does spark um, some of those behaviors. And um, I don't know if you can hear here, but we have flowing water um, in our beaver enclosure too. And it's constantly flowing. Um, and she does bring wood um, and tries to like block it. And, and she does a lot of those same behaviors like a wild beaver does. Um, so they do, they rely on their sound a lot to, to know how to change the flow of water and how to change the environment. Um, so they have more wetlands. Great. So a couple of questions that are related to beavers preferred diet. So some students who are tuning in are wondering um, if beavers eat other animals in the wild and also um, if it's, you know, they really focus on just eating the leaves and um, twigs from what they, you know, collect and, and not the actual wooden part. Yeah, so beavers don't eat other animals. Um, they do just eat plants. But they, like I said, so they do like the bark and the leaves and the twigs. Um, they also eat aquatic plants. So plants that grow in the water um, are also full of iron. And I mentioned they have that iron in their teeth. So they need to eat lots of plants that have a lot of iron in them to keep their teeth and the rest of their bodies strong and healthy. Um, they'll eat other little plants that they can find. We can actually move. We'll try and get a little bit closer here to the beaver here at the park. And um, I'm going to feed her some of her favorite foods and I'll keep answering questions, but that way you can see our beaver instead of just seeing me standing here talking about her. So we'll get a little bit closer to see her. All right. So her, a couple of her favorites. So spinach is really important for her. I was talking about some of those, um, here. I was talking about some of those leafy greens. So spinach is really, really high in iron and also some green beans. And you can see her hold it with her hand and bring it to her mouth with her front paws. And you might even be able to hear her crunch on it. But we need to always make sure that we give her lots and lots of veggies um, to supplement her diet and make sure she has all the um, nutrients that she needs. You're on. <laughs> Did we have any other questions? Yeah, there's a couple more questions here. Um, can you tell us a little bit more, Jade, about the importance of beavers in, um, in, out there in the landscape and kind of why they're an important part of our ecosystem in Maine? Yeah, so I talked about um, how they're a keystone species. Um, and like I said, that's a very important um, species in the ecosystem um, for other wildlife and for the environment. Part of um, creating more wetlands 
It also just provides water preserves for both people and other animals for times of um, drought or when we have less water. So beavers will create more wetlands, um, not just for the animals that are there, but also for all of us um, in times where we have less water. Great, and one more good question. Um, the audience is wondering what predators beavers have. Yeah, so beavers do have a number of different predators, um, especially young beavers. So like I said, an, an adult beaver can be uh, upwards of 55, 60 pounds or more. Um, so predators like lynx, um, fishers, they will, they will get a beaver. Um, and that's another reason why beavers want to always be close to land. They make these little trails through the woods and everything so that they know the fastest route to get back to the water. They definitely feel safest when they're in the water because animals like the fisher and the lynx are not going to chase them into the water. So that's sort of their safe place. Um, but when they're on land, they don't move very quickly. Um, and they're a lot more vulnerable. So those predators are going to be able to get them when they're on the land. But they're definitely a lot safer when they're in the water. Great. And you may have talked about this already, Jade, but do you know how long an average beaver's lifespan is? Um, so in the wild, a beaver um, might live somewhere between like 10 and 15 years um, would be a pretty long life. Um, here in captivity, uh, they might live a little bit longer because they're getting uh, medical attention and um, specialized diets just for them. Um, but in the wild, living um, between 10 and 15 years would be pretty average. All right, we are gonna go back over to our table here. Say goodbye to our beaver here at the wildlife park. She is gonna go take a swim. Um, but I just wanna say thank you to everyone for watching today. Um, please visit mefishwildlife.com slash field trip. And you can see um, upcoming programs and also you can watch recordings from all of our past programs um, so if there's anything you're especially interested in, go check that out. And we probably have um, a video for it or a video coming up. And uh, just thank you again for watching. And I hope you enjoy your weekend.